Good morning, folks. We've got a look at NOAA's updated solar storm prediction for tonight and tomorrow. We'll peek in on two studies of solar forcing of physiological conditions, and we'll get one on plasma penetration into the Earth atmosphere. But we are starting with our star. Last 24 hours on the sun, we have not had more flares. Minor eruptions have gone off around the limbs. The solar wind here at Earth from the coronal hole stream has died down a bit, along with geomagnetic disturbance, but of course we've got more coming last couple of days. We analyzed two coronal mass ejections that released and have a chance of impacting Earth. Yesterday we saw the endless spirals for those events, but NOAA has updated theirs such that it now shows both the bursts we had previously identified and shows them combining pretty much as they impact Earth tonight. You can see both eruptions here, with the second one having a stronger eruption speed and catching up to the first one right as they approach the 1 AU mark, where Earth orbits. How they combine the sequence of impact in the magnetic field direction within the plasma clouds will ultimately determine the severity of the solar storm produced here at Earth, but NOAA isn't leaving the lower end of the range in the spotlight after those last two above average solar storms. They predict level two event and a level three event for tonight and tomorrow when those impacts occur, KP6 to KP7. We will be closely monitoring the solar wind today to see when those impacts occur and what impact they produce on the magnetic field. We'll also be watching for more eruptive activity since the sunspot scenario includes multiple small but complex groups and the coronal and umbral magnetic fields are suggesting more sunspots may crest over the limb here in the next 24 hours. Eyes on the sun and the solar wind. Folks, we've got a good paper here on a rare positive impact of solar and geomagnetic activity on the human physiological condition. They noticed statistically significant improvement in childhood asthma parameters during inclement space weather events. It is very nice to get a solar health impact paper that isn't negative for once. We also have another one here on growth parameters and implications for cranial and brain size associated with solar activity complex works, these two, but an excellent direction to see kept alive in the scientific literature. Last but not least, we've got a paper describing the prompt penetration electric fields from the polar region down to lower latitudes expectedly enhances plasma variation near the equator directly in correlation with the strength of the penetration fields and the solar storm that caused them. Veteran observers will remember, this subfield is the one way we know that it is not just the polar region impacted by space weather, but the ceiling of the global electric circuit is impacted worldwide. These variations can occur in just a matter of minutes, triggering global circuit effects on clouds, precipitation, temperatures, and storm activity. We greatly appreciate your support. Check out the links below the video to learn more and access observer resources. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.